Welcome to the Ultimate PC RAM Guide. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So in this video, I'm going to go over what type of memory you should buy, as well as how to properly install as well as optimize your memory. But before that, let's first answer the question, why does your RAM or memory even matter? Well, getting the right type of memory and properly optimizing and installing it matters because if you do all of those things, you can see a big difference in games, especially at high frame rates with modern CPUs. See, really slow RAM speeds that have also been installed incorrectly is going to negatively affect the performance of your hardware. So it's highly important that you purchase the correct memory for your system and also install it properly. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the meat of this video. So first let's talk about speed, latency, rank, capacity, and how many modules you should get when going to purchase your memory. So when it comes to your RAM speed, the first thing you need to look at before purchasing your RAM is what CPU you have. So for example, if you have an Intel CPU that states that it supports up to 2666 megahertz DDR4, well then that's the slowest speed you should realistically go out and buy. The only reason why you would get any RAM that's slower than that is if you are on an extreme budget or you're simply unwilling to go into the BIOS to even enable XMP, which honestly is really simple and you shouldn't be afraid to do it. So definitely, in my opinion, the very slowest memory you should get is the fastest that your CPU supports. And in most cases, these CPUs can support even faster memory. So for example, Ryzen supports 3200 megahertz out of the box, but in reality, a lot of the chips can actually support 3600 megahertz. Now, one thing that you can go out there and be pretty sure with modern CPUs, third gen Ryzen, as well as modern Intel CPUs is 3200 megahertz seems to be the sweet spot right now in terms of how much money you're spending as well as the compatibility with all other chips out there on the market. So if I was going out there to buy RAM right now, I'd probably try and get RAM that's around 3200 megahertz. But of course, you can always buy faster memory if you think that your CPU and motherboard are compatible. Now let's talk about latency, which is something that is often unfortunately overlooked. See, latency is almost just as important as speed. And when you're looking at a kit of RAM, the latency will be called CAS latency. And it'll say something like, for example, on a good stick of RAM, 3200 megahertz DDR4 will be 14, 14, 14, uh, 30 it, for the first numbers that it shows you. And if you get that type of RAM, 3200 megahertz with 14 cast latency, that's pretty good latency. A bad example for latency would be something like 3200 megahertz RAM with say 19, 19, 19, 40 cast latency. And the problem with having really high latency is that it can actually make RAM that has really fast speed not be any better than RAM that has a lower speed but much tighter timings or lower timings. So it's highly important that when you go out to get your RAM that not only do you get a good high speed memory for if you're going to be gaming, but it's also important that that high speed memory has as low of timings as you can possibly get for a reasonable price. Now there's some really expensive memory out there that's super high speed as well as super tight timings. And you know, oftentimes that's just not really worth the price, but it's up to you whether you think it's really worth it or not. And now we're going to talk about rank, which is unfortunately mentioned even less than cast latency. And rank is important because it pretty much comes in two flavors. You get uh, single rank or dual rank. And the way I can break this down for you is that in general, dual rank memory is typically better, but it's not better by a huge margin. So when you're going out and you're purchasing memory, you, when you look at the memory, it should say something like 1RX8 or 2RX8. And the one and two designates whether it's single rank or dual rank. And so that's pretty much the only way that it's typically shown on memory. They don't really like to advertise it, but if you see two kits of memory and one of them's single rank and the other one's dual rank and they're the same price, definitely grab the dual rank. It will be slightly better typically, but it's not the end of the world. So just keep that in mind. If you're going for the absolute fastest memory, dual rank, is typically better. Now let's talk about capacity. And for the most part, this is just up to how much you believe you need, but I'm gonna give you a little example here. So in terms of gaming, 
the most memory you'll probably be needing for the foreseeable future, at least for the next couple of years here, would probably be around 16 gigabytes of DDDR4 memory. Now, if you're someone who does a lot of content creation, whether it be Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, you may find yourself needing more. But again, for example, for me, I work with Photoshop, Premiere and a ton of other Adobe software. I do a lot of video type of content, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be seeing this video. And for me, 16 gigabytes is still more than enough. Now, a couple years down the road, I may find that to not be true. And I am someone who works with mostly 1080p footage and then I export it to 4K. So if you're someone who does a ton of different effects in Photoshop or uh, Adobe Premiere or other programs and you work in like 4K, 8K, etc. Yes, it may be good, a good idea to move up to 32 gigabytes, but I would say for the vast majority of people who play games and even do a light amount of content creation, 16 gigabytes should be enough. So it's important that you're not just buying more memory that you don't really need. And then finally, when it comes to buying memory, how many sticks should you get? Well, it's important that you get at least more than one. You need at least two sticks. And the reason for this is, to my knowledge, all modern motherboards have what's called dual channel support. And the same goes for the CPUs that get socketed into the motherboards. And what this means is that if you run at least two sticks of RAM or four sticks of RAM, then you can actually get higher performance. So it's really, really important that you don't go out and just buy one stick of RAM. That is a huge mistake. And honestly, it's something that can easily be avoided. And it typically doesn't cost a whole lot more to get two or four sticks of RAM. So make sure you do that. Now, when it comes to two versus four sticks of RAM, Honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. There's been some cases where having four sticks of RAM can limit your overclocking potential versus two. And I'm sure that is the case on some motherboards. So personally, I don't think it's worth the extra money because typically it is. It does cost a little bit more to get four sticks versus two. So I, I like to stick to just two sticks of memory, you know, whether that be two sticks eight or two sticks of 16. But obviously, if it's much cheaper to get four sticks of eight versus two sticks of 16, then do it that way. Now, before we move on to the installation of your RAM, there's one more thing I wanna go over that's really, really important with RAM. When you're going to pick out RAM and or you're going to upgrade your memory, it's really important that you don't match different types of RAM. As you can see here, I have two different types of RAM here that were in a PC. And while you can technically install two different types of RAM into a computer and it will tip usually boot and not give you too many problems, I've just found that there's been a ton of systems in the past that I've had to fix that had, you know, different kits of RAM installed where all of a sudden it's blue screening all the time. Now, whether this be that there's some sort of timing difference or silicon difference that eventually causes a problem or just that one stick of RAM from a different brand goes out at a different time, I'm not sure. But what I can tell you is I've seen over and over and over again computers that I've had to pull a stick of RAM out and what do you know, they're mismatched sticks of RAM. Now, if I were you, I wouldn't even go out and risk buying two identical kits. If you wanna buy 32 gigs of RAM, do not buy two 16 gigabyte kits of RAM. Just go out and buy one 32 gigabyte kit of RAM. And the reason why is because even if it's the exact same RAM, same speed, same timings made by the same company, there's a chance that the silicon is slightly different there's other things that could be slightly different. I have no idea. And so that's why it's really a best practice to just buy one kit. And if you want to upgrade your memory, buy a new kit and sell your kit. Do not mix mismatch RAM. It's just not a good idea. Can you technically do it? Yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. Don't do it. It's something that I never, ever do. I've never done it because, I've, like I said, I've seen too many issues pop up from people who have done that. And now let's move on to the installation of your RAM. And this is something that seems really simple, but you can make a mistake here that again, can cost you a lot of performance. So when you go to install your RAM, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and grab your motherboard box, open it up and grab the little booklet that should be inside of it. And you need to get it out and you need to actually go to the page that shows you where to install your RAM and read it. This is important because not all motherboards are the same. Some motherboards have certain channels that they want you to put the RAM in. And it might be that you can put yeah, and one motherboard, the two sticks right next to each other and you get dual channel. The other mother, another motherboard, it might be in slots one and three. 
another motherboard two and four. And they do this because there is typically two slots that are the best highest performance slots. And so it's really, really important that you go ahead and read that manual with every single motherboard because like I said, it's not always the same. Now, when it comes to actually physically installing the RAM, this is pretty simple. So I'm just gonna go over it pretty quickly here. All you gotta do is you take the two little arms in your motherboard, you fold them back, you line up the RAM with the, the little you know gap here where the gap is on the motherboard and you put it in with equal pressure on both sides until you hear a snap and the arms come up holding the stick of memory in. Pretty easy, so let's go ahead and move on to the actual optimizing of your memory. So when it comes to optimizing your memory, this is really, really simple, but it can get really complicated. So let's go over the simple option first. So when you first boot up your system with new RAM, you're probably gonna go to Windows, right? Wrong, don't go to Windows. The first thing you should do is go into your BIOS by mashing F2 or delete, depending on what your motherboard wants you to do to get into that BIOS. Now, once you're in your BIOS, go over to like the overclocking page or the main page where you can see all of the different settings that you can change on your motherboard. And there's only one thing you gotta change there. It's super simple and too many people don't do this. It drives me bananas. Go over to the setting that says XMP for Intel. It might say DOCP for AMD. It's essentially what it is, it's an extreme memory profile. And what that is, is when you buy a, stick or a kit of RAM and it says like 3200 megahertz on the box, it probably isn't going to boot to 3200 megahertz right away. It's probably gonna to boot to the uh, JDEX standard, which is 2133 megahertz. So if you bought a 3200 megahertz kit of RAM and you don't go into the BIOS and enable XMP, you're probably running 2133 megahertz RAM and you just wasted a bunch of money. I see this happen way too often. So make sure you enable XMP or DOCP, uh, depending on if you have AMD or Intel, and then just hit F10 and reset and then you can boot into Windows. Now, I mentioned that it can get pretty complicated and it can, and here's why. You can actually manually tune your memory and this is something that's just simply beyond the scope of this video. And so I'm gonna direct you to another video that I've done if you wanna get into that. It's, a, it's basically a manual overclocking of your memory and this can have pretty big gains for certain processors like my 3900X and 3900XT showed some pretty significant gains from tuning the memory uh, I've seen a lot of Ryzen chips have pretty significant gains. Honestly, even Intel can see some significant gains if you get a really good memory overclock and you're able to tighten your timings down quite a bit. But again, that's beyond the scope of this video. So if you want to see how to do that, I am going to direct you in the description below. I will have a link to a video I did that's just a whole video on memory tuning. So if you want to get into that, go down there and watch that video. But that's pretty much all I have to say about memory. You know, there's just a few things that have been bothering me for a while, a lot of misconceptions about RAM. And RAM is something that's really important. And it's a shame that people just go out and buy any old stick of RAM and shove it in their computer and they don't, this happens too often where they just don't, they don't enable XMP, they buy one stick of RAM, they, they put them in spots they're not supposed to so it's not, uh, you're not able to get the optimal speeds out of it, et cetera, et cetera. I just, I see these problems all the time. So I thought it was about time that we made a video like this. But that's all I have for this one. So if you made it to the end of the video, be sure to comment below what type of memory you have and how fast you're running it. And I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. And of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.